standby for manual transmission in three, two, one. Manas, there's a story on Galnet that you need to hear. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Galnet breaking news bulletin, neo marlinist suspected in recent bio-waste explosion. Operations at Mawson Dock were disrupted yesterday after an explosion in the bio-waste treatment system resulted in the violent discharge of raw sewage from every waste extraction unit on the station. One station employee, who wished to remain anonymous, described the suspected attack this way. I was just sitting there, doing my morning business when the toilet started to vibrate. I'm not going to lie, at first I kinda like that. But then there was this stream of thick, warm brown sludge that came spewing out so hard that it knocked me off the seat. And it just kept coming, it was terrifying. I can't even describe it and I can't get cleaned up until the bio-waste system is repaired. What kind of monster would do such a thing? I wish I was dead. At least then I could escape this horrible smell. Station engineers attributed what's been dubbed the perfect shitstorm to an explosive made from a precise mixture of laxative and toothpaste introduced into a critical mass of bio-waste. Investigators trace the noxious substance back to the quarters of a developmentally disabled man and his robosexual companion. The man claims that members of the NMLA held his robot lover hostage and forced him to consume mass quantities of toothpaste and laxative which he then introduced into the station's bio-waste system in the usual way. Experts theorize that the explosive actually formed in the man's colon as the laxative and toothpaste combined. Station management described the incident as truly diabolical, and ordered the evacuation of all non-essential personnel while the station undergoes extensive decontamination and fumigation. Hum. If only someone had warned you that leaving Barry alone with a repurposed sex bot was a really bad idea. Oh, wait. <sighs> Spare me the lecture, please. Also, I just received a text-only message from Barry, he says he'll be evacuating to Elm City in a few days. Ah, shit! Dun dun! Dun 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 Oh, seven commanders, nuggets, and empty triangles. Mando Dextra here with Chapter 4 of my Ultimate Guide to Bounty Hunting. In the last episode, we outfitted a new ship, the Cobra Mark III, and took it out to collect engineering materials. Then, on our way back to the bubble, we stopped at Darnell's Progress in the Maya system to buy a single unit of meta-alloys needed to unlock Felicity Farseer. In this episode, we're going to put those materials to work. Right now, we should be able to access Felicity Farseer for some nice FSD and thruster upgrades and Todd the Blaster McQuinn for his multi cannon mods. But there are two more easy engineers we need access to Elvira Martuk for her Grade 3 Shield Generator mods, and The Dweller for his Grade 5 Power Distributor and Grade 4 Pulse Laser upgrades. If you followed my instructions in Chapter 3, you got an invitation from Elvira Martuk for traveling more than 300 light years from your starting location just by going to visit the Bug Killer site. Now we need to procure three units of Soontil relics for her. This is a rare commodity found at Chernovsky City in the Naguri system. So that's our next stop. We also need to get an invitation from the Dweller. For that to happen, we'll need to trade with at least five black markets. Black markets only trade in stolen goods and illegal commodities. Luckily, Chernovsky City is run by imp scumbags, so we can fill our other five cargo slots with Imperial Slaves. We'll sell these, one each, to black markets in non-Imperial space where good decent people live and slavery is illegal. And yeah, I understand we're engaging in human trafficking too, but we don't really mean it. For us, it's just a case of eggs and omelets. Honest. Locating black markets is pretty easy. 
We can use the Galaxy map and set our filters to show systems that host them. Then, we'll need to use the system map to find the specific station and make sure its market is actually open for business. Black markets are frequently unavailable depending on system states, etc. After locating a market, sneaking in and selling a bit of contraband should be easy. I did not get scanned a single time doing this, but if you're worried about getting caught, just be ready to use silent running. Going dark and boosting away when a scan is detected should be enough to prevent the scan from being completed. Even if you are caught, it shouldn't result in more than a fine and the loss of the illegal cargo. But really, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Once we have our invitation from the dweller, we'll need to visit material traders to make sure we have the materials needed for the specific mods we want. Here, we'll use a few third-party tools to make the process much easier. Check the description for links. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Elite Dangerous content. The first tool we're going to use is Coriolis Shipyard. Here we can build the ship we want, complete with engineering mods. Once built, Coriolis can generate a list of materials we'll need for engineering. If you use ED Engineer, and you should, you can export the list directly into that app, and it will keep track of the materials you have and need to trade for in real time. Now that we know what materials we need, it's time to locate some material traders. The search nearest tool from Inara will allow us to find the closest ones. These guys come in three flavors, raw, manufactured, and encoded, and we can use them to trade the materials we gathered in the last video for the ones we actually need to engineer our ship in this video. Now that we have invitations from Felicity Farseer, Elvira Martuk, The Dweller, and Todd the Blaster, and we've traded for the materials we actually need, we're finally ready to engineer our ship. First, we'll visit Farseer Inc. in the Desiat system. This, along with most engineer systems, is notorious for ganking, so you might want to visit them all in solo mode. Here, we'll need to donate one unit of meta-alloys we bought at Darnell's Progress. Then, we can engineer our FSD, thrusters, shield boosters, and power plant. Next, we'll visit Elvira Martuk. After donating three units of Soontil relics, we can upgrade our shield generator with her. After this, we'll go see the Dweller and donate 500,000 credits in exchange for upgrades to our power distributor and pulse lasers.
And finally, we'll go see Todd the Blaster McQuinn donating 100,000 credits in bounties to upgrade our multi cannon. Now, our new easy engineered Cobra Mark III should be much more effective in combat. That means it's time to go back to the res to farm even more bounties and collect more materials for our next ship build, the Vulture. Until then, good hunting, commanders. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. <laughs>